Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's start. Um, welcome everybody to a session about maps and open layers. Um, and just answer to answer the first question of the event. Um, my name is Antje Leuch. He's Paul, and I can't actually pronounce your second name. Paul is okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and since you've already asked, there's also our Twitter accounts. Um, I'm mainly a site builder and I do documentation, so that includes documentation for open layers. And, and uh, I'm one of the co maintainer of open layers on the branch 2.x mm -hmm. since uh, July 2012. So, and, um, just to have an idea who you are, um, who of you has ever put a map on a website? Who's using open layers for that? Who has been cursing open layers while you've been doing that? <laughs> Okay, so um, what we're going to give you is um, a few examples of what you can do with open layers, um, what is actually done by open layers and what is done by other modules, because there's a hell of a lot of modules around that do something with Geo. Um, and then we're also going to tell you the nice new things that are currently in the dev version and in the, in the next beta version. If you have any questions, just shout them out. Um, we only have half an hour, and unfortunately we're the only session but the break after that is only 15 minutes. So we can't really run over that much. Um, some examples. Um, well, what you can do with open layers is just making maps with lots of markers on them. But of course, maps with like different layers. So this is, for example, a map that shows you lots of breweries and pubs and places to buy an ice beer. Um, this is a map from the UNESCO website in the Netherlands that when you click on one of these uh, markers, actually gives you a pop-up that not only has the, the name of the place, but also a whole slideshow included in there. Or you can do something that's another Dutch website where they've recorded sound all over the Netherlands. And if you click on any of these markers, um, you can actually get the sound of that place, like the frogs and the bir birds and the farm equipment somewhere outside Amsterdam. However, as you can see, there's still lots of sites that don't use open layers. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, I think I could have pulled pretty much every single Drupal camp, Drupal con, or whatever. Um, because, yes, you can do lots of things with open layers, but if you just want to put one map on the site, it's usually just easier to just say, oh, forget about it. I'm just going to plug this thing in. I'm just going to put the J JPEG on it. But wouldn't it be great if you could actually scale down from your map of London or Europe to where you need to go, including to in which room your session is? Or click on your map and say, OK, this, these are the things that are in this room without having to swap between a PDF that you download or a Google map and the map on your phone. So we hope that after this session, some of you will be more willing to go that extra mile. Um, what does the open layer module do? Um, first, it's basically three different steps that's going on. First of all, it's building a query. It's kind of, it's, yeah, build, building a query and views to actually say what should be on the map. Like, what, what places should be on the map? That's mainly using views. Um, then you have a step where you're actually configuring the individual maps. Like, what should be the background? Where should it be focused? Um, and then you go back to views and actually put it on the site. Um, which is a bit confusing because you have to do these three steps in this order. Um, it, taking, it takes advantage of the fact that views also is actually split in this regard of, on the one hand, doing the queries and on the one hand, putting the result of the queries on the website. So I'm going to go through them a bit step by step. If I'm too fast, just or just shout out. Otherwise, we also give you the link at the end of the documentation, so you can also do it step by step. Um, oh, just before I forget it. What does not? What does the Open Layers module not do? It doesn't actually do the input of the data. Um, the earlier version did that, but that's just <coughs> getting too big. If because by now, putting data in in different formats, storing them in different native formats, uh, is just a whole completely different task. Um, so Open Layers doesn't actually do data input, doesn't do data storage, and also doesn't do geocoding. Like if you just type in London, um, it needs to transfer, transform it into something that you can actually find on a map. Um, so that's not what Open Layers is doing. There's lots of other modules for that, and um, Geofield does a lot of that. It gives you the option to input data in different formats, like 
typing in the lo longitude logic, typing in the, the data, um, putting it as well-known text, putting a dot on the map. Um, it gives you the option to either put in a dot, a line, or a whole polygon, like if you want to map the whole area. And w is, together with other modules, it also gives, gives you the option to store it in different formats. So, um, besides Geofield, there's also lots of other modules that if you go, for example, to the website of, um, to, the pe to the Drupal.org page on Open Layers, you find the whole list of related modules. Um, or on Geofield, you have another list of compatible modules. So, um, there are lots of modules that do lots of extra bits. We're just going to concentrate at the moment on what Open Layer does. Um, but there's lots of additional functionality you can add from these modules. So, the first step is once you have actually a content type that allows you to input a geolocation, a place, um, a point on the map, um, you actually build a view, you build a query that quite often only consists out of the title, the location, and a short and a, a description. <coughs> And if you go on, I thought I made a date, but apparently I didn't. Um, and you set, set the format to the open layer data overlay, which gives you the option of actually then say, okay, where's my, my geolocation coming from? From which field? So just get out of the way. Um, which is the title? Which is the description? Um, you see, it only has one description. And if you remember the earlier formats or the earlier examples, they had like <coughs> slideshows or so included. That's actually the place where you can take um, advantage of views that allows you to actually put in lots of additional fields, not display them, but use their tokens in the, in the one field that you use for the description. So you could also add here as fields, images, additional text fields, and just use them as tokens to be shown up with this one, cont uh, with this one field. Does it make sense? Yeah, you might exclude them and then Yeah, you exclude them, but you just bundle them all up together. So in the end, you can actually display um, seven, eight, or whatever fields you want to display in this description field. So once you've built your query, and you can use all the whistles and bells that views does for that, you can use arguments and filters and um, relationships. Um, once you've done that, you save it. And you actually go to the to the open layers interface to <coughs> configure your map. Um, you see that consists basically out of three different parts, and unfortunately, for some weird reason, lots of the words are used double, and we haven't figured out a way of renaming half of them. You have some general resources. That's basically the layers and the styles, <coughs> or the layers and the markers mainly. You have a list of all maps, and then you have also the specific settings for your one specific map you're looking at this at this moment. So the general resources are a list of maps that are already in there, a list of tiles. Open layers doesn't render your, your map. You <coughs> have to actually pull up tiles of map from somewhere else. Um, so here you have a list of all the, the maps that are already in there. And you have a list of markers, which can be either your default marker, which is like yellow with an orange circle around it, but you can also upload you like, your own markers. Um, that can be used by all of the maps. And in future, you can actually even go a little bit further. You can also use images as a background of a map. Um, Paul is coming to that later. Or you can even use um, <coughs> images that come with each specific node as a marker. So each node instead of what you currently have in open layers, they would all have the same marker as a city. But you can actually in future, in the current dev version, also pull out an image from each node. But at the moment you will just have to rely on the current default markers. Um, so besides that you have a list of all maps, um, which have a lot of default maps in there. And you can simply clone them to build, to make your own map. Different sources of the mapping data, is that something um, you mean? <coughs> Different providers? No, these are, yeah. 
These are the, the base layers. That's the different providers. That's right. like, for example, Google Maps, Satellite, OpenStreetMap. Um, right. There's a whole bunch of them in there as default. Yeah. Um, that's basically available for your whole site. Would it be possible to add your own maps? I develop maps using Origin. Would it be possible to add it to the to the back end? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of what kind of map do you want to have? Well, it's so it'll be for some archive kind of maps that are developed, and would it be possible to put them into the? If if we can um, query query the map using uh, W WMS uh -huh. uh, standards, it's okay. There is a layer tab called WMS that you can use, and you can you can add any kind of map you want. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. But of course, you can develop your own layer type within the custom modules. Okay. But I'm, so I'm thinking more of geomorphic, geomorphic maps, where basically strata and rocks definitions stuff like that, mm -hmm. and these are slightly a bit different to the standard Google maps. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we can see afterwards it. because I don't know unfortunately. Oh, that's that's always that's sorry. Mm -hmm. But basically what we have here is, is base layers that's quite a lot of default maps that are in there. Um, what's what's uh, what's here is maps is actually your like maps as I should like in the end, look like in the end. Um, and that's where it quite often gets confusing, which I decided not to show you the usual um, page. But basically, when you come to map, to editing your map, you basically need to start assembling the map out of all the bits and pieces that are in your Drupal site. So you have to pull up your uh, you have to pull up your your data overlays that basically says what should be on the map. For example, all locations of Drupal cons or all breweries in the UK or whatever. Um, you have to tell the map how the background should look like. Should it be a um, Google satellite image? Should it be OpenStreetMap? Um, but you also <coughs> have to tell it a few other things, like first of all, which markers to use. Because um, especially <coughs> if you have different layers, you actually want pe people to be able to say, okay, this. These are all zoos and these are all museums, or uh, these are all Drupal cons and these are all Drupal camps. So you have to tell it which, which markers should apply to which layer. And then all the nitty gritty bit stuff like where should the mark <coughs> map actually zoom in at the beginning? Um, if you only have one dot on the map, it automatically defaults on that marker being in the middle. But if you have a bigger area, where should it start with? Um, sometimes, yeah, you might want to just have Aberdeen as the focal point. Sometimes you might want to have the, the whole continent. Um, so that's a setting you can do. <coughs> and then you have what's called behaviors, um, which has a lot of small bits and pieces like, should there be tooltips or pop-ups? Like, should there be something that you can just hoover over and it shows you something or a clickable link? Do you actually want to have a layer switcher, and if so, what should be in there? Um, what kind of navigation do you want to have? Um, that's, for example, relevant if you use um, a responsive theme, where suddenly the map makes the whole site, uh, the, the whole bits of the screen. Um, and by trying to scroll through the page, you're continuously just scrolling through the map because you can't get beyond the map. Um, so there's lots of different settings for navigation that allows you to scroll on the map, to only use the bar, things like that. Yeah. All of that you do for the individual map. And once you've done all these settings, you basically you come up with like, yeah, how should your map look like? Um, and then you go back to views, because now you have the map, but it doesn't actually show up on the site somewhere. So you basically, you're now going back to views and make a second view, which is called an, an open layers map. Um, and there on the settings, you simply say, which should be the map that should be showing up in this view. That, that, that display can, it can be a page, it can be a, um, an, a, a pane, um, basically all the options of, of views. Um, but you have to say which, 
with map sharp, sharp on there, and then you're basically done. Um, yeah, then you're done. <laughs> and then, um, is there any questions on that part? So what I'm interested in is giving, uh, uh, I want to pinpoint users when they register, mm -hmm. and they may just... Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff is, is doable using a, a custom behavior, of course, because you can control everything using JavaScript, and instead of showing a point, you show a circle, for example. Yeah. This can be done using um, a custom behavior. Cool. You probably want to do it on the back end and just generalize it and actually store it yeah. in the database, saying, yeah, we've decided our area is geographically down to whatever region. Like, if you're geocoding it with Google, it will have the administrative region. So you just store people in the administrative region and this show how many people in the administrative region. And that's all, that's all the geo field and geocoding and all that kind of stuff. And then you never send the data to open layers because that's then sending the data to the front end and you could read it. Gotcha. Right. Right. We have to have it somewhere. Right. Okay. You can. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Can you make like which pins you show dependent on a query string and a URL? Do you do that with the argument in the view or something like that? Um. Probably. Uh, can it, no, I think. Are you talking about the exposed filters? Yeah. I was, well, I was just thinking. Yeah. If you wanna, if you've got a user searching for something, you might wanna vary what you're showing depending on the search. I think that should be doable with, with the argument, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can use on the argument just as in views to build that, that specific query yeah. and um, combine that query with a specific that layer, a data overlay with a specific marker. Uh, the question, maybe I'll extend the question. Can we use ex the views has an option called exposed filters? It's like mm -hmm. a get query submitted to a view with a form. You can combine that as well, yes. So it's so basically like a but the normal view is just show a list of, say, nodes. Mm -hmm. And then when you ex use an exposed filter, it would reduce the number of yeah. nodes mm -hmm. based on what you select. So if your nodes are just pins on the map, you're just reducing the number of pins mm -hmm. based on what you select, so it should work in the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or another way of doing that is, if you already have the layers anyway, you can also um, use the layer switcher to turn on and off specific layers. I just wondering how you tackle heat maps with open layers. If that's a, in fact, whether that's the right thing to use, or whether there are other modules you'd actually specific use for that. So, for instance, if you had a, a spot on the map, being able to work out mm -hmm. transport times and use that as essentially almost a chromatograph, you know, essentially showing you how that works. But could you give any examples of how you put that together? Um, there is a module for for creating heat maps, um, but. It still has to be improved, but it's yeah. working. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have time to. There are some patch to commit, but I don't have time to commit that for the moment. But I'm really busy for open with open layers, but it's working. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which might be the good moment to continue with the things that. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, I'm presenting the new stuff that will be um, on the new version of open layers. <coughs> A new version of open layers has been released. Um, in the last uh, last December, after one year of development, and some some good stuff has been included inside, and I will pass and review uh, all those uh, new features with you. <coughs> so the first things uh, that has been done is unifying the, the user interface based, uh, using C tools export UI. It means that uh, all the screen in Open Layers looks the same. If you go to Layers, Map, or, or Styles. You see, you, you see that the screen is the same everywhere, and it's thanks to the module C tools who provides a, um, a mechanism called C tools export UI for having a unified uh, user interface. Um, this this was really interesting for us because we, we could remove a lot of a lot of code uh, from open layers and use code from C tools. That was one of the first thing that has been done for the beta three. So. The next thing, it's a small thing, but it's the save and edit button on the map edit form. When you edit a map, you have a save and edit button. Well, this is a small thing, but it's just, it is really a time saver. Next thing also is uh, using the new machine name form element provided by Drupal 7. In Drupal 6 and in the, in the previous version of open layers in Drupal 7, you had to fill in manually the machine name when you edit a, a map or adding a new map to the system. 
Now it's automatically uh, calculated with a map title. And you can also edit it just by clicking here. <coughs> then we have a new default dark, dark style, the new pop-up here, which is really <coughs> better than the previous one, smoother, which is now by default uh, in, in Open Layers Beta 3 and that version. Also, we have a new behavior called the reticule behavior, which is provided by Open Layers, the, li the GS library, which allows you to display some lines here, and you can control all of those settings, like um, the, the color, the thickness, <coughs> directly on the map here. You have the form, and you can control all the settings here. Then, we have dynamic styles, but this, instead of showing you uh, some screenshot, I'm going to make you a demonstration, and I hope everything will be good. <laughs> I created um, a small demo site here, and um, you can see the dynamic markers here, for example, for London. If I click on London, I go to the node with the image. I can change the image in here. Let's take another picture of London, for example. picture. That picture is here, and if I go back to the map now, you see the picture which is here. So how does it work? Um, this map is using uh, layers uh, created by views, as we can see here. I'll show you. Layers. And you have the layers here, places. And the image field is using a new formatter called Open Layer Styles. And when you select it, you can choose how you want the image to be displayed on the map. And you can configure all the styles settings that comes from Open Layers. This is something new. You can configure all of that. <coughs> and then it's automatically displayed on the map. As you can see here, some other examples here. So this is new. If, for example, you don't have an image uploaded onto your node, it will be displayed as a standard um, marker. You can see it here. For example, for the City University of London, I don't have any image, so it's using the standard marker. Okay. Then, Bing Map. Yes, we are now uh, using uh, Bing Map instead of Virtual Hearth in in Open Layers. Virtual Virtual Hearth has been removed from from open layers, so it was logic that we removed it from the module also. So now we can use uh, Bing Map also. So this is also libraries, so no screenshot but a demonstration. Um, <coughs> now in open layers, we are using uh, the module libraries as a dependency. It means that we can choose how to load the open layers library, either externally by using uh, a URL, external URL, or using the internal library. 
And when you are using the internal library, you can choose which variant. Using the original, the original debug, the light, light debug, mobile, or mobile debug. Currently, our only original and original debug are supported. Light and mobile are not yet supported because this is brand new. So, how does it work? We are using uh, the library module, and um, you can also see the demonstration here. I'm connected on the server. I don't know if you, if you see currently, but if you do drush libraries list. Can you make the font a bit bigger? Sorry? Can you make the font bigger? Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Control plus, maybe. I don't know how to change this, but you can, you can list all the libraries from your installation here, and you see open layers, version 2.12, and you see all the variants here. And something new also, you have a new command to download the library, Drush DL Open Layers, which downloads automatically the libraries to your Drupal installation uh, and, and put it in the right directories also. This is new. Next stuff. So you, is, it, is that so you don't have to load it dynamically every time? Is that what you're saying? Is um, before, Open Layers were, were, was loaded using HTTP, uh, openlayers.org, right. yeah, and so on. But now you can load it from your installation now. Right. And you can choose which variant to load. Mm -hmm. What will the uh, differences be between those three variants? Sorry? What will the differences between those <coughs> variants be? You have, for example, the original and original debug. The original is compressed. The original debug is not compressed, and you can read through the code easily, and you can you can see what's going on. Between the difference between the original, the light, and the mobile versions, um, I know that the light, the light version removes some controls unused, some layer types also, but I don't know exactly the differences. Uh, I know everything is explained on the open uh, the readme of the open layers library, but I don't I don't know it by heart. So, uh, what's next for the future? Uh, I'm currently working on a patch for including the projection, um, custom projection, in fact. Um, this is a guy from, uh, from Germany called Augustus Kling, who, who provided a very nice patch to, to let us use custom projection. I'm going to show you here. You see, now in, the, um, in this version you have a new tab called projections, and you can add your own projection inside. For example, if you edit this one, you see you can define the whole projection here. This is really interesting because it allows us to create such examples using custom projections. For example, this example 3. This is not possible yet with the beta tree of open layers. This is really nice. <laughs> this is not yet possible only for the only with the patch. <coughs> so, this is what I'm, I'm currently working on. I think we're supposed to be finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my phone is telling me, but we can ignore that for a bit. So, also, I'm working on providing a form element open layers, so it will be easier for everyone to include a map on a form for, um, using a standard form element in Drupal. <coughs> Also, I'm working on including open layers strategies um, in, uh, in the module, but this is um, strategies are something special from the GS library of open layers, and I will try to provide to, to create something to, to customize them and to use them uh, in open layers because currently uh, behaviors are, uh, are hooked to the map, but strategies will be hooked to the layers directly, so it's a bit different, and uh, I'm working on that. And uh, <coughs> Open Layers 3, which is being developed right now, it will be probably for, um, for Drupal 8, hopefully. To find us on, on IRC, we are on Drupal-Geo. You have the Open Layers handbook here. 
And um, thanks for, for listening to us. If you have any questions, you should. <laughs> yep. Is the output always raster bit maps, or is it possible to have any vector output like SVG, depending on? It depends uh, on on the library and on the layer type you're using. But I think uh, open layers uh, already do some some layer types for using SVG, but I don't know them by heart. There's Thank so you. much stuff that I don't know. It means it's worth me having a look. That's cool. Yes. Thank you. I was just wondering what the kind of core fields you have to have in your node that you then import into your view to generate your map would be. Is the, the, what, how do you translate a node into a place on a map? Is it a postcode or...? Sorry. X, Y, uh, longitude, latitude, how you actually place the object. How do you, how from, you, you've got your view that's pulling in all your nodes, that's telling you how to build your map, right? How do you convert, what fields do you need in your node to tell the view, to, to, okay. to tell it how to... I'll show you. You have here, um, I have some content on my website, and I have a content called place. This content place structure has a title, a localization using geofield, and an image. Okay. Then, if I want to place those nodes on a map, you are using you use views places edit. I'm not sure the options of well of the geofield. So we in this case we're using geofield as a as a module to put the, the information in. Um, and that comes with um, different widgets. Um, um, so if you have open layers and geofield, you can either say, okay, I want to have a small map on my on my form where I just put a dot or a line or a polygon. Um, but you can also say, I want to put in latitude, longitude. Um, so it de really depends on how you expect your, your data to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you shall just add con. Mm -hmm. And if you get geocode a module as well, <coughs> it adds an extra widget that will let you type in an address, it sends it off to either the um, OSM um, geocoder or it goes off to Google geocoder or any of the other services and that then sends back a location that it then stores in Geofield. Geofield only stores uh, latitude and long longitude. Mm -hmm. But, but you can choose on how to put the yes. information there. So exactly. in this case, you get on your form for the content uh, for the content type, you get this really big map where you can then. Um, so then you just click to the yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can say, okay, now actually London is like. Um, but also, you can have a boundary is. box. You said so you yeah. can have an array. Yes. Of, yeah. Yeah. You have here these three options of a, um, a box. Um, So you can put you can put in a box. You can put in a line if you want to. Um, yeah. well, you should be able to put in a line. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> ah, that's not. You select, could, select, select this twice. Yeah. Second one. Oh yeah, that's <coughs> the line. Um, and you can also in the widget setting you can say okay, um, this content type should only have one location, or it could have numerous locations. That depends really on like what your what your use case is. So. For quite a lot of things, um, you want to have one dot. But for example, if you have a conference that's spread over different places, um, or a company that has an office here, an office there, and an office there, you might want to put in several, um, several, yeah. several locations. And yeah, um, quite often a map like this is a useful input. But if you if you already have the GPS data, um, you might just as well um, be co copy pasting or typing in your um, your longitude, latitude. So that depends on, on your settings or on, on your needs. So. Mm -hmm. I think just, just following on from that, we, we would really like to move away from the sort of location GMAP or that. But one thing that that 
that does provide is if you you know you sort of enable location GMAP and GMAP location and then you tweak a few things and then you kind of have this user experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I mean, to me, I could I you could be you could be playing around with the settings on open layers, geofield, geocoding for hours, and you might not get that same user experience. Is there any scope for you know, maybe some recipes or something, but it would be great if, if there were a set of steps that I could go through mm -hmm. somewhere on Drupal.org or, you know, on a wiki page or something that just said, this is how you set up a complete end-to-end -end replacement for for GMAP mm -hmm. and location. Because at the moment, I, I, I see that, and I mean, if, if we gave that map to clients, they'd be clicking all over the place, mm -hmm. and then the front end would look <laughs> terrible. It would, you know, there'd, there'd be points mm -hmm. everywhere, whereas, you know, we want a way of Providing a very specific step by step. Can you drop that configuration into a feature and provide a feature that someone can download and use? Sorry. Yeah. About Could you create a feature with this stuff in it, like like you have here, and just mm -hmm. give it give it to JP? It's an idea. And not just me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that we, we just, that would be invaluable to be able to sort of just mm -hmm. have it so that, that that user experience is there, not just the functionality, which is amazing, but just being able to kind of give it to someone who doesn't know anything at all about maps and they just... Oh, I yeah. think once it's configured and uh, the only stuff you, you have to, to... the only stuff people have to do is to edit the nodes or add the nodes and set the correct location. Then everything is done automatically by the views or... Yeah. I think if you, if, you, if you saw end users who didn't know much about maps and didn't know much about Drupal setting a location with that, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. I get the feeling that they would they would go wrong mm -hmm. and they would go wrong and they would go wrong. Whereas something like location GMAP is like a really fixed so there always, yeah, sorry, And sorry. what's the difference between uh, setting a position using the GMAPs and using that kind of map then? Uh, because there well, is I mean, not just a lot of difference, huh? Simplistically simplistically thinking, um, I mean there's no address field there. Now I know there is an address field module and a geocoding module mm -hmm. and these things all work. And somewhere you you know if once you set it up once maybe you know how to set it up. But you want you want the option to have the node and a field with a postcode in place and then yeah. an extra option if they want to put on a map if the coordinates don't line up or the postcode is not correct. So and I guess that must be there. Yeah, that, that's, that's easy to set up. That's yeah. Yeah. But, but, that's, but that's, yeah. where is yeah. where is yeah. the is there a recipe out there that says um, this is how you set this up? Unfortunately, there isn't much recipes out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's one of the things I've been trying to do in the last year or two or so is actually to get the document or right up the this kind of documentation a step by step ones. Um, so that would be a good one. Um, also because yeah, you have to see okay which modules do I need. Um, yeah. So yes, in that case, you might need geocoder as well as geofield as well as then open layers. Um, what you can do just on the open layers end. Um, this one was now using the default map as the map that shows up on your content form map. But you can also say, okay, I know everybody's going to put something in here is like in London or in Wales. So you can actually also make a map that focuses on that area to start with. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to zoom through the whole continent to get to your place. You can actually make um, the default map to be, what's Canada? <laughs> so, um, that should now properly come up with like that if you want to make a new content type, it should it focuses on Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so you can also fine tune in the um, and you can set that by content type. Right. Uh, but I think we have to be bounding up now. Yeah. I don't think it's, is it worth me just coming to Drupal Geo, the IRC yes. channel? Yeah. yeah um, the other yeah. thing is um, we probably well, have a just the last thing because there's sprints tomorrow afternoon. So if anybody actually wants to sit down and watch one case and write it up step by step, uh, then that's something we can have to do.